So this is uh, example two with probability trees. And here we're looking at uh, how to do probability trees um, when we're sampling without replacement. So the probability won't be the same the whole way through. So in this situation, we've got five chocolate chip cookies and seven ginger cookies in the jar. If you randomly pull out one cookie and then another, what are our probabilities for getting both ginger cookies? And what's the probability for getting one of each flavor? So here we're assuming that after you pull the first cookie out, you eat it. And then you get to pull out your next one. So, I might want to think about my probability tree. So at the beginning I have a choice of chocolate chip and a choice of a ginger cookie. And what is the probability of that? Well, we need to think about what the probability is here. I've got five chocolate chip cookies and seven ginger cookies. So I have a total of 12. So I have five out of 12 chance of getting a chocolate chip as my first cookie. And then I have a seven out of 12 chance of getting a ginger cookie for my first one. So let's assume that I get a chocolate chip on the first go around. My next possibilities are still chocolate chip or a ginger cookie. But here, I've gone on and I've eaten one. So I've eaten a chocolate chip cookie, which means I have one less chocolate chip cookie now. So I have four chocolate chip cookies, but I also have one less cookie total because I've eaten one of them, so it's now four out of 11. Because my first cookie in this case was a chocolate chip, the number of ginger cookies stays the same. I still have seven of those out of the 11 left. And looking at the other situation, if I eat a ginger cookie first, the probability of me getting a chocolate cookie second, well, there's still five of them left in there because I haven't eaten one yet. And that's five out of 11 because I did eat one out of the total. And for a ginger cookie, well, I've eaten one of those here because my first choice here is ginger. So that takes me down to six out of 11 for the ginger cookie. So if I wanted to calculate the probability of both ginger cookies, that's gonna be from the start, ginger, and then another ginger. So here, I'm gonna multiply those probabilities, seven over 12 times six over 11 and in this case, I'm going to get 0 0.3182. So my probability here for both ginger cookies is 0 0.3182. So again, at the start, follow your finger along for the paths you want to choose, in this case both ginger cookies, and make sure you again times along the branches as you go. Next one, what's the probability that I get one of each cookie? Well, a couple of ways I could do that. I could eat a chocolate chip and then a ginger cookie, or I could have a ginger cookie first and then a chocolate chip cookie. So I've got more than one possibility here. Again, I need to find the individual probabilities first. So I wanna know what's the probability of this situation, chocolate chip and then ginger cookie. That's five over 12 times seven over 11 and this is equal to 0 0.2652. And in the other situation, again, trying to find the individual probability for that, would be seven out of 12 times five over 11. And that is also equal to 0 0.2652. And now that I've got more than one possibility that fit the criteria for one of each flavor, I could have gone chocolate and then ginger cookie, or I could have gone ginger cookie and then chocolate chip. I have to add those together. So because I have more than one possibility, I'll add them. 0 0.2652 plus 0 0.2652. And that's gonna be equal to 0 0.5304. So that is the probability that I get one of each flavor. So again, keep in mind with probability trees, pay attention to the probabilities if they stay constant the whole way through or if they change from one situation to the next. 
And remember, you always times along to find the individual probabilities. And if there's more than one of those that you need, you'll add them up together.